All right, here's our next example. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit more complicated, so you better pay attention. There are going to be some important word, things that I'm going to teach you in this one. Uh, again, what we're going to do is we're going to find our possible rational zeros. And we're going to do that by the factors of our constant over the factors of our leading coefficient. So we're going to get plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So again, what we're going to do is we can go and try all those and see which one actually works. Or I'm actually going to graph it. So you can see I've typed it into my calculator. I'm um, going to go look at the graph. So here's the graph of our polynomial. I'm trying to find the zeros. Zeros are also called x-intercepts. So again, as you can see, my possible zeros right here, uh, they're all integers. So I can look at the table and see if it can't help me out. Now, as you notice in this one, when we look around, uh, we see negative 3, negative 1, positive 1, and positive 3. So looking at the table, we know we see 1, 0. But if you look in between negative 5 and negative 4, we see there's a sign change. So going back to the uh, nice little, what was our theorem the other day? Um, our intermediate value theorem basically says that there has to be a 0 between negative 5 and negative 4. And then you come down and look, and there should be 1 between 0 and 1. And that's evident when you look at the graph. But the good thing about the table is we actually found one of our zeros, negative 3. Now, the problem with this is, is that we've only found one zero. And based on the degree of this polynomial, there's actually going to be 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this zero, and we're actually going to calculate, um, we're actually going to divide that zero. Now, remember, when you write this in, uh, in linear factored form, that zero would be x plus 3. But we're just going to use this and try to do a little synthetic division. So we do this. We're going to bring that down. Multiply it by what's in the box. Add those together. Multiply. Add. And multiply. As you can see, we did get a nice little remainder of 0. Now, making sense of our polynomial, we would say, well, the degree of our polynomial is 3. We divide it by 1, 0. So we just subtract. So we'll get x squared. And then plus 4x and then minus 1. So the good news is we're actually at a quadratic. So how that's going to help us is with a quadratic, we know multiple ways to find solutions regardless of the type of solutions. Now we, those, we know that these solutions are not imaginary because when you look at the graph, it actually does cross the x-axis. So we're going to get two real solutions. We know they're not going to be rational. So if they're non-rational zeros, then we know we can't factor it. So what we can do is we can do one of two things. I'm actually, on this one, I'm going to complete the square. So I'm going to move that uh, one to the other side and group my variables together. If there's a leading coefficient, I need to factor that out, but there isn't. So next I'm going to take half of b. When I take half of b, I'll square it and put uh, that answer up there. Now, 4 times 1 is, is 4, so I'm going to add 4 over here. So that'll give me a nice little 5. And then, now that I've completed the square, I can go ahead and solve for x. So I get x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. So we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. Now that's the exact value for the other two zeros. And I'm not going to take a decimal answer for these, so you better learn how to do this method. Because if you give me a decimal, I'm just not going to give you credit for it. I actually want to know the exact values. So we found three zeros. And our three zeros in this problem are negative 3, negative 2 plus the square root of 5, and negative 2 minus the square root of 5. So there you go.